Hello and welcome back to the podcast with me, Harry Simu. And uh, as ever, this podcast is brought to you by JW Betting and TVSportsBlog.com. And on this particular edition, we're going to be having a little bit of a debate. Now, joining me on the line are Simon Alavi and Dan DeLuca. But before I bring those guys in, I'm going to set the scene for uh, this week's debate. Now, this is a new weekly feature that we'll be bringing to you Um where you can get involved in the comments, you can have your say too. So we look forward to, of course, picking this up. But today's debate is in regards to uh, Mikel Arteta, who's, of course, set to take the Arsenal job, and Carlo Ancelotti, who is set to take the Everton job. Now, we're going to be debating uh, around... Which club has made the better decision? Uh, Which manager is more suited to what these two clubs need? And I'm going to set the scene uh, from the very beginning because if you think about it, we're talking about two uh, very historic football clubs, two clubs with uh, big support, uh, two clubs who have not been anywhere near where they feel they should be in recent times. Uh, Both clubs sacked their managers within the last few weeks. But we've seen contrasting uh, effects since that. We've seen Everton pick up. We've seen them beat Chelsea and go and get a draw at Old Trafford um, under Duncan Ferguson's leadership. And we've seen Arsenal under Freddie Lundberg not really be able to to find any pickup in their form. And that's been a real concern for Arsenal. And I believe that's what's led them to act and to go out there and appoint a manager before the end of the season. Now, uh, Simon Alavi, welcome to the show. First of all, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you, sir. How are you? Good, good. Not too bad, not too bad. Now, you've spoken to me kind of off-air and on, offline in the last few days uh, about how you feel that Mikel Arteta is a good choice for Arsenal and he's someone worth taking a gamble on. Do you want to explain why you believe that and why you feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. And Harry, you'll back me up on this. I actually said this when Wenger left as well. You did, you before, did. Before Emery. I think he should have been the man to, to replace um, Arsene Wenger because... Someone has to take a, take a gamble on, on Arteta. And, you know, you hear what people say about him, and we're not talking about, you know, Warnocks and Tim Sherwoods and Dion Dublins on this world. We're talking about Wenger and Guardiola and um, Pochettinos. And, 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 and the comments they make about him, they, they, they hold him in such high regard that I just think, they must know what they're talking about. Now, if you look at who's available for, for Arsenal, take the obvious three. Take, we, can't, we can't include Pochettino here, so take the obvious three. Take Benitez, take Simeone, and take um, Carlo Ancelotti out. I cannot argue that those three would, would trump Arteta. But what I can say is that Arteta is someone who should be chosen above, say, a Toral, a uh, Genesia, the was that the former Lyon manager, uh, and Eddie Howe, uh, a Toral, um, I said him, the, the Valencia manager, a uh, uh, former Valencia manager, Gallardo, someone who I think is doing well at River Plate at the moment. So this is someone who's coming in, not off, not just of great praise. And I know the I know the uh, uh, the case study would be Gary Neville here because as someone who didn't who went in and didn't do very well. And now doesn't um, doesn't have anywhere to go. But he's coming off very high praise from a lot of people with very credible reputations in their game. And doesn't it say something about his character that when he was first offered the Arsenal job, apparently or had talks, they didn't meet his demands? Now, to me, that shows strength in character. But, but, secondly, go sorry, gone. I was just going to say, you know, there's mixed reports on that because on the one hand, we heard that Arteta turned the job down, that he didn't feel it was for him. Arsenal couldn't match his demands. And on the other hand, we heard that in actual fact, the club preferred to go with Unai Emery because they felt he had more experience and he just pipped him in the interview. So mixed stories. We don't really know. Fair enough. But doesn't Unai Emery just sit in the same boat as a Torao, a Gallardo, a... Uh, I don't know, uh, a Santo, uh, a Paolo Salsa, these guys who, why go down that route again? If you're not going to get those top two, three names I mentioned, just take the risk, someone who loves the club. What's the one thing Arsenal need at the moment? Someone who cares about the club and someone who can get the ball back within five to eight seconds. That's exactly what he has learned. He would have learned at City. For me, that's what Arsenal need at the moment. You know, they're great going forward, but it's without the ball that they could use Arteta. Now, again, you're, you, you'll know more than me, Harry, but I'm led to believe that he was instrumental towards the end of um, Wenger's reign. He was actually allowed to take 
coaching sessions there. I don't know how true that is. He's learned under Pep for three and a half years. So, yeah, I said the case study was Gary Neville, but Gary Neville learned his England assistant boss. He didn't learn under Pep Cardio for three and a half years. And the last thing I say about his character is this. He could sit on that bench, right, at Man City, may probably win the Champions League this season, collect more money, and eventually take over Pep Guardiola. But instead, he's willing to risk his whole reputation as a coach and go to somewhere which, quite frankly, at the moment, is a volatile atmosphere. Unattractive, and, isn't it? It's an it's unattractive, unattractive proposition. And I don't know what it is about your club, right? But why is it that there's already Arteta out, there's already players apparently don't want him to... You know, I just can't understand it sometimes. Like, once, if he is selected, which he probably will be, then you have to get behind him. And sometimes I just think it's such a hostile atmosphere at the Arsenal that the fact that he's got the, well, he's got, for want of a better word, he's got the balls to go on and take the job take, is a testament to his character. Great points. You make some great points there, Alavi. Uh, De Luca, your thoughts on the whole Mikel Arteta thing before we move on to, uh, to Carlo Ancelotti. These are, like I said, two clubs that are nowhere near where they need to be in my opinion, one has shown a lot more ambition by going out and getting Carlo Ancelotti than the other. But equally, Alavi makes a good point, doesn't he? That people need to get off Arteta's back. You know, he hasn't even taken the job yet. So surely we need to give him a bit of space, a bit of time and hope maybe that he comes good and just get behind him for the time being. Yeah, I think look, the fan base has been in a split state of disarray for a good three, three, four years, you know, the, the ones who want Wenger out, the ones who don't. And then you need a manager to hit the ground running. Otherwise, the ones who want Wenger to stay get vocal and you're still in that cycle. Um, for me, I mean, for Arsenal Football Club, I, for Arsenal Football Club, I, I find it to be a terrible appointment in the sense that it just highlights the state the club are in. And, and I think they're waving the white flag a bit too early here. So there's a few things I'm going to come back on um, based on what Aladdy said there. Um, so first of all, for me, I think Mikel Arteta should be taking the Everton job and not the Arsenal job for a start. Okay, Arsenal, he he was, you know, he was played for both clubs. He spent, you know, the most of his career at Everton. Um, and whilst you know he had a good three, four seasons at Arsenal towards the end, however long he was there for, you know, he still got an affiliation with both clubs. I don't believe that Arsenal have fallen to the extent where they should be taking punts on managers. Like Arsenal should be able to pick a manager from most other clubs in the division or even Europe still. So, you know, even if Arteta was to go to Everton and prove that he had a little bit about him, Arsenal should would be would easily be able to pick him up. Um, so going for a big name at this point is what Arsenal should be doing. What I've heard from Arsenal over the last four or five years and their fans is, you know, oh, but who was available? But I could list you managers who have been available for the last five years when Arsenal have been struggling or Arsenal could have got. Um, you know, Jurgen Klopp w- was available at one point. Arsenal didn't get in. They didn't make the move at the right time. Antonio Conte was available. Um, I just think it highlights for me how far Arsenal have fallen where six, seven years ago, what Arsenal and Arsenal fans, well, the noise coming out of the club was when Guardiola leaves Barcelona, yep, you know, yep. we'll, we, will, we will get Guardiola and we'll get Guardiola because we play that style of football. We've got a good youth academy. We've got a fantastic stadium, you know, all these things that Guardiola had associated himself with. And even at that point in time, Arsenal had some world-class players, obviously not in the, not in the ilk of, um, uh, of Barcelona at the time, but, you know, Van Persie was at the club. I'm not saying he's my favourite player in the world. He's probably slightly overrated, unlucky with injuries, but... You know, a Guardiola taking over Jack Wilshere. You know that there was there, there was prospects there. You know, you still have fullbacks who 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 could get forward and do and do a good job. And now what we're saying is we're going to take Mikel Arteta because he's played or because he's learned under Guardiola. That that is a that is a demise in a short period of time to, to go from from there to there, especially where there's Allegri out there. There's Angelotti out there. There's no guarantees that a big manager works. We've seen that with Emery. He's got some. He's got some form under him. We've seen it in the past with Louis Van Gaal. Yeah, he won a trophy at Man United, but he didn't do. He didn't do a great job by any means. Yeah. Um, but this thing that really does that really does do it for me, um, whether it's Arsenal or any other club, is you know someone learning under someone. How many times do we need to get this wrong before we give up on it? I mean, let's look at, you know, my favourite one. It happens every year, like, for, for the last decade and a half. Oh, well, you learn under Alex Ferguson. 
Well, let's look at some of those play- those managers. Mark Hughes, Mark Hughes, Mark Hughes learned under Alex Ferguson. Dreadful. Steve Bruce, dreadful. Paul Lynch, oh, dreadful. Hold on, hold on. Steve Bruce was someone we 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 all owe apology to. Again, no, he's doing a good. He's and doing a. Not. And all the Newcastle fans, instead of instead of having a go like the Arsenal fans, they all thought, Do you know what? Fine, we'll give him a chance. We'll but get they, were, they were having a go at the I'm beginning. Not, no, they were having. Yeah, a, yeah, they did, they were having a booing. right he's go at the beginning. First, they did boo him the first day. No, no. They, they, to be fair, they weren't happy with the appointment. Absolutely and he's not. Won they, were them, he's won them, they were. He's won them round with some decent, decent performances versus their expectations. They're still like 12th, 13th. Like, Dan, if you ask Dan a Newcastle Guardiola, fan, Guardiola was a risk himself. He came from Barcelona. Uh, yeah, but Alavi, as I said to you, as I said to you in in our conversation earlier on today, it's one thing taking a risk on a manager when. You've got the likes of Xavi, you've got the likes of Iniesta, you've got Lionel Messi, you've got the funds to go out and get pretty much anybody you want in world football if you think things are not going your way. This is a very, very different situation. Yeah, Arsenal. and I can't, yeah, I'll get that, yeah. and I counter that by saying, what would the target be at Barcelona winning the league? Higher expectations. Arteta's target, finish top six and you'll be fine this year. Especially if he brings that assistant coach with him, which is rumoured to, the one that Pep had. Um, at Bayern and um, and Barcelona, so yeah, so look, things can things can work out. I'm not I'm not saying it won't work out. Like Guardiola works out. Yeah, he has some great players with him, but obviously he's got a bit about him as a coach as well, and he's taken that to other clubs. Um, you know, it's a much tougher assignment. It, I mean, it's a free hit in a way. If it doesn't work, you can sack him. I think the ball are playing it safe with the fans, and I think they think if they get someone from the club in, he'll get a bit more time. Similar to. You know, when Chelsea had a transfer ban and they yeah. suspected the season might be a struggle. But the fact is, like, just learning from a manager doesn't, it, it doesn't isn't prove enough. a thing. Like, yeah, we, we said the same about Paul Clement. Yeah. You look at yeah. the manager's Paul Clement system under, you know, he's gone to Swansea, didn't really pull up any trees. He's gone to Derby, he's been a mess. The problem here is that we talk about, you know, <clears throat> giving him the time because he's he's an ex-Arsenal man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But... You know, Mikel Arteta is not what I would class as an Arsenal legend. Let's let's set that right. You know, he's not. Um, in many people's eyes, he was a weak link in a team for quite a long time. A lot of people wanted Arsenal to go out and replace him uh, during the time he was with the club. That didn't really happen. Yes, he seems like a nice guy, uh, a good footballer on his day, but he did have problems at Arsenal as well. It wasn't all glory uh, under Mikel Arteta. That's that's the thing that people often forget and that often gets overlooked once a player retires. But I guess the, the point of today's debate is to, is to understand whether we believe that Everton have made a better appointment than Arsenal have made. And when I say that, we've got to take into account that, of course, they are two different clubs, but they have similarities in the sense that both are nowhere near where they need to be. Both got to the point where they felt they had to sack their managers. One have gone out and hired arguably the most decorated manager in in football at the moment for an incredible amount of money, and the other seem to have taken the cheap route. And that's where Arsenal fans are, are frustrated and a little bit concerned. Now, um, Alavi, I'm going to bring you in on Carlo Ancelotti because... Everton are a team who in the last few years have spent uh, decent amounts of money. They've brought a lot of players in through the door, but it's never really quite worked out. They've had Ronald Koeman. They've had Marco Silva. They've tried various different things. Is Carlo Ancelotti, from his point of view, is he right to take this job in your opinion? Or is he set up to fail at a club that maybe demand more than what their their team can actually give them? It's, It's a good question. It's... It's like the whole pet thing. Can he do it with a side that have, say, lesser players with, with all due respect to them? It's almost like they've got it the wrong way around. Arsenal were meant to get Ancelotti and Everton should be getting Arteta. I see your point, but I do think they've won the lottery, Everton. And it, to be honest, I'd probably disagree with you in the sense that Ancelotti hasn't got anything to lose. I mean, if he does well, he's going to be a genius. And if he does badly, he'll just, you know... He'll just wave just, his medals. This is what I mean. He'll wave his medals. He'll say, look, how can I work with these donuts over here? You know, this isn't, they don't try and play my type of football. I can't get anything to them. Honestly, it's a, it's a no win. And it, sorry, it's a win win. And actually he'll probably have more funds than Arsenal come this January. So, uh, sorry, and this, uh, and, and over the summer as well. So now I think it's a good move. And also it's, it's a, like I said, it's a chance to prove yourself. That's what you should do. That's, that's why Pep and 
even messy to a degree. That's why they don't quite get the recognition from some people because they don't go out to a lesser club or uh, whether you're a player manager and prove it there. And for me, that, that's actually an important thing. to. And, and you've said that about Maradona yourself, Harry, when comparing him to Messi. You know, it's a key thing to do and I think every manager and player should do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dan, what were your thoughts when you heard that Everton were the front runners to get Carlo Ancelotti? Because I was really surprised. I know they've got money. Um, I know they've got ambition. We've seen that in, you know, some of the transfer windows they've had of late. But it it just felt like Carlo Ancelotti was a little bit beyond their reach, but they've somehow managed to do it. Um, so this, my view on this is it, it will feel contradictory, but hear me out. Um, it's obviously a fantastic opportunity for the football club to get a big name manager that is beyond their wildest dreams um although it, it's an opportunist move isn't it you know I, I i look at everton at the minute and i wonder what the plan is they sacked marco silva purely out of desperation really they, they couldn't keep him any longer they physically could not keep him and he had to go then you look around who they're trying to bring in and there's people talking about David Moyes and, and all sorts. And suddenly, Angelotti has come available. He's been sacked by Napoli. And just like that, instantly, some name has been thrown in the mix. And I think they've made a call just to just to see, just to see, just to see if he fancied it. Um, it, it feels like they haven't got a plan. A door's opened up and they've seen it as probably their best opportunity for, you know, Possibly forever to get a manager of that of that stature. Is he going to work? I guess my thing with Angelotti is how much hunger has Angelotti got today? How much stomach has he got for this fight? This is very yeah, different to, true, what he, to what he's been used to. So you look at you look at Mourinho and the job he came from and the situation of Man United, and to him, you kind of get the sense that he wants to prove himself. And I wonder whether Angelotti is going to have that much hunger. So, I, I mean, I think the Arsenal job would have been a better fit for Angelotti. I think the Everton job would have been a better fit for Arteta, given the stages of their careers. You know, Angelotti would have come in, he'd have provided some experience, he'd have got the respect to the big names, and he would have been, a, been able to attract big names. Yeah. Um, you know, so Angelotti being at Everton might tip the balance between a player who might have otherwise gone to join West Ham. Um, but is it still going to be enough? Whereas I, I, I kind of feel that Everton, Everton have jumped two steps. You know, they've, yeah. they've not had the stepping stone. Fair play to them for doing it, you know. And since Mashiri's come in, there's been a lot of threats coming out of Everton about all these great players they're going to sign, how much money they're going to throw about. They have thrown money about, perhaps paid slightly over the odds for, for some good players, but um, perhaps not the top, top level players. And, and obviously they're hoping that Angelotti can, um, can make the difference. Harry, I think, if this was any other time, do you, or do you think that Arsenal would be fine with it? Is it, is it just like rubbing salt in the wound when like... You see well, Everton getting like from it's an, just this yeah, ironic thing, I mean, isn't it? Like from an it's Arsenal, like David Beckham, like with like an unattractive girl, like a tramp, like it, a it, like from, from an Arsenal perspective, it is it is a little bit frustrating, particularly when this is a manager that I wanted to succeed, Arsene Wenger. It didn't happen. We went down the Unai Emery route, which had its risks, less of a risk than the Mikel Arteta appointment does because, you know, he'd won uh, three Europa League titles, he'd, he'd won the league in France, etc. But it just feels like these types of managers like Carlo Ancelotti, they don't come around, you know, they do move clubs quite frequently, but the opportunity to get him at the door without, uh, you know, having any competition from anyone else because it's mid-season and he's out of a job just felt like too good of an opportunity to miss and I don't believe that he's chosen Everton over Arsenal I don't believe Arsenal have even made contact which is even more frustrating really um, <laughs> you know from an Arsenal fans perspective guys we're going to have to wrap it up because we're coming towards uh, the end of the debate so I just want to quickly get a quick 30 seconds from each of you if you were an Arsenal fan or an Everton fan who would be more pleased would you be more pleased to see Arteta coming in a fresh start for Arsenal a new philosophy a philosophy guided you'd hope by arguably the best manager uh, in the world at the moment or would you be more excited as an Everton fan seeing a, a legend like Carlo Ancelotti coming in the door Alavi uh, yes sorry I, I have to say Everton just because it's almost like winning a lottery ticket but only only just probably not by as much as you guys DeLuca 
Yeah, it, it, it's Everton. I think when the fans turn up for the first time and see someone like Andrew Lotti in the dugout, they will have belief that the owners of their club are trying to push on. Whether it works or not is, is another matter. But to see your club trying to show some ambition, that's the sort of stuff that gets fans excited. Whereas Arsenal, it just feels a little bit like we're at a crossroads. We're not sure what we're going to do. And we're going to take the safe option. Um, and again, it might work out. But when you're an Arsenal fan, if I was an Arsenal fan, I would look at three or four managers who have been available in the last two months. And I would say I've got a manager that has no guarantees of being close to any of them. Um, yeah. And it's a gamble. Great stuff. Thank you very much to the pair of you. Thank you to those of you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you're watching us via YouTube. If you're listening on the audio, please, please do leave us a review. And this show is sponsored by JW Betting and TVSportsBlog.com. We'll be back next week with another debate. Until then, take care.